I got myself a new laptop to streamline my video production workflow, and it's an MSI Creator 15. It turns out that I got a super powered machine that just blew me away with the speed improvement, and I'll tell you the impressive results later. We'll do an unboxing and then I'll show you what I like and don't like. Then we'll actually discuss how I set up this computer to be privacy safe. As you will discover, the Windows 10 spyware is a maze and if you don't quite understand what you're doing, you may be sending everything you do to Microsoft. Fortunately, this can all be disabled. This is going to be a two-part video. The first part will be the unboxing and a review of the MSI Creator 15. And then the second part will be how to set up your Windows computer without the Windows spywares. And I'll be explaining in the second video, which will be coming up in part two. Stay tuned. I post my videos ahead of YouTube on odyssey.com. I have a link in the description so you can follow me there. We all need to use a VPN and I think it's a given that you should trust a person offering the VPN service. Instead of giant corporations, why not use Byte's VPN, which is my VPN, and it comes with pie hole ad blocking, Tor routing option, servers all over the world, and a real person behind it. The link is in the description and it will also help support this channel. I'll start the unboxing of the MSI Creator 15. First of all, why did I choose an MSI Creator 15? This particular laptop is bigger than most laptops I get and I usually get the ultralight laptops, but since I'm making 4K videos, I really need a machine that can handle a creator workload. And it's been really difficult to do editing even on my fairly new laptop running on an Intel i7 processor. This new machine is an i7 10th gen CPU, a 10875H, eight cores with a dedicated NVIDIA RTX 2070 Max-Q graphics card. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM, 8 gigabytes of video RAM, and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. It also has a 1980 by 1080 touchscreen. It's one of the more expensive laptops I've gotten with a pre-tax price of over 2100. This is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money, so I'll tell you both the good and the bad. By the way, an MSI GS66 Stealth is a high-end gaming laptop. That's why it has a dedicated NVIDIA card. This is desktop level gaming performance on a notebook. As it turns out, high-end gaming is pretty close to high-end video creation. So in reality, an MSI Creator 15 is really just a repackaged GS66 with some changes in the display and offering a higher-end CPU. This laptop is bigger and heavier. Most of my other laptops are two pounds, but this one is a hefty 4.63 pounds. Fortunately, after using it for a while, I have to say that it's not so bad. As long as I can lift it with one hand, it's still okay for me. I think five pounds and up and it's a deal breaker. I wouldn't call it portable anymore. I work with a stack of laptops, so being able to move it around with one hand is important. And also it, that it's thin. Which fortunately is the case here, it is less than three quarters of an inch thick. Most of the frame is aluminum, so it's pretty strong. Interestingly, and I know this because I've opened it up, the bottom cover is actually plastic. But I guess it doesn't support the structure. The front trim is also plastic. The matte finish though matches the metal. I think the front plastic is intended to eliminate the sharp metal edges for your arms. The screen is very thin with minimal bezels. This one I got is a 1920 by 1080 touchscreen. In hindsight, I should have ordered the 4K screen. The reason is that I can see the pixels. You cannot see the pixels on a 4K screen, so the small fonts would have been better. So that is one mistake in ordering so far. The keyboard layout is actually good. At the beginning, I had to adjust to the fact that you actually have to type a little bit to the left since there's an extra row of keys on the right. But after using it for a while, I automatically found keys without looking, so the layout seemed pretty standard. No adjustment period was necessary on the keys. I actually preferred it to my HP Spectre. This thing has a hefty 99.9 .9 amp hour power supply, which is a huge battery. 
In fact, it's the largest possible legal battery on an airplane, which is 100 is the limit. You can't bring 100 amp hours. This machine needs a lot of juice, and when I was using it early on, the fans were constantly on. But after a few days, the fan isn't on as much with daily use. I think what it was doing was downloading Windows updates in the background, and that took a lot of extra resources. I haven't tested the runtime, but apparently 9 hours is the expected number. But if you're charging this beast, the power supply is huge and heavy. It's 230 watts. That's massive for a notebook. Coming from the small USB-C charger on my three other laptops, this is one of the biggest shockers. Now it's running with quiet fans. This has three fans at the bottom. But the bottom is surprisingly not super hot. That's because it was made of plastic and not metal. So it has a little bit of an insulating effect. The fan air vents on the side, the bottom vents appear to be intake so no heat comes out of the bottom. That's important on a power hungry machine like this. It was a concern to me when I bought it because I don't want something so hot on my lap. Just to give you a sense of performance differences between this and my prior Windows laptop, which is an i7 8th generation HP Spectre X360 with 16GB of RAM. I encoded my last 4K video on the HP and it took 1.5 hours to complete. On the MSI Creator 15, I did the same and it completed in 8 minutes. Let me repeat that. 8 minutes. That's 1,125% faster. I have no explanation why that would be the case. The HP is just a little over a year old, so it really highlights how inefficient the built-in Intel GPU is for video processing. I knew the NVIDIA card was fast, but I wasn't expecting this kind of performance. So great news, I'm not much of a gamer, so I don't really have experience with NVIDIA cards. One of the most important features of the MSI that caused me to pick it is that it has two M2 slots so you can put in a second SSD drive. I didn't find any other gaming computer with this feature. This is critical for the way I use computers in general. I explained this in my older video on setting up a new computer safely. In that video, I explained that I always assume I have to reset my computer on a regular basis. This helps me ensure that there is no malware because some malware are pretty impossible to catch, especially at the three letter agency level. By doing a reset, I become immune from Metasploit level attacks that can occur without your knowing. In order to do a regular reset, you have to use a second SSD drive like I've always done on all my laptops. Here's an example of a Samsung T7 SSD, two terabytes, which I plug into the laptops and attach with Velcro. But an MSI has a second M2 slot so I can plug in a second SSD drive. So on mine, you can see that I've installed a separate NVMe 2TB SSD drive. This is why I didn't bother with a big boot drive. I left it at the lowest possible, which is 512GB. What's neat about this is that anytime I reset, all my data is on the second drive and I don't have to worry about affecting it on a reset. To save time, I recommend moving all your software installation files to the second drive so they're available in the future for a quick reset. Because of this second M2 slot, I don't need any dongles and Velcro anymore so it's actually sleeker for me to work. This unit also has a full Ethernet port, HDMI, two USB-Cs, one USB-A, so it eliminates the need for dongles. It also has a full-size SD card slot, which is great because video cameras use the full-size SD card. No dongles needed again. Now let's talk about my second mistake. One of the first things to check when you're getting a new Intel CPU is to go to the Intel website and check the CPU chip model and its features. This is using an i7 10875H, so here's the specs on the Intel site. Many consumer laptops in the last few years no longer have Intel AMD vPro, which is the Intel management engine. As it turns out, bad news for me. I thought I pre-checked this before I bought it, but it turns out that my computer has IME. I disabled ME updates in the BIOS. I'll go through that procedure later, and I have to run a special program to disable AMT or IME. Anyway, if you can, buy a laptop without AMT on it. 
which in case you didn't know, is the Intel backdoor. My conclusion on this laptop is that I didn't like the screen resolution at 1920 by 1080 or 1080p. Clearly my HP with a 4K screen is sharper. It is louder than my prior laptops with the triple fans and I don't like the fact that AMD is on it. This is way heavier than any laptop I'm used to, but I was mostly shocked with the size of the massive power brick. But the performance is incredible. From a productivity point of view, this will save me lots of time. Doing the editing and the bigger screen also helps with that. This may not be suitable for the heavy traveler as it is borderline portable, but gaming wise, it's a pretty solid machine for gaming, which is what it's heavily used for. I'm not a gaming expert, but I can tell you that some versions of the MSI GS66 can boast super high frame rates on the 300 megahertz screen. No laggy gaming here. This will blow away any Xbox, even the newest Xbox Series X. One thing I liked about the MSI Creator 15 and even the GS66 gaming version is that neither version screams gamer at you, so it doesn't look out of place in business use. I like the plain look actually, even the logo is subdued. So stay tuned for part two where I'm going to go tell you how to set up a Windows computer safely without the spyware from Microsoft. If my videos help you, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting that notification bell. Let's encourage the algorithm to share this content so more people get to see it. Privacy is an important fight and we need to have a large community to make a dent. Thank you to my patron supporters and those who buy my products from my store on Braxme. See you next time.